Hello, beautiful soul fam. Welcome back again to another episode. Today, I interview Melissa Lapides. She's an integrated psychotherapist and trauma specialist. Now, Lisa has supported hundreds of people through trauma and into their freedom. She trains professionals in her safe space trademark method. Today's episode, we actually discuss what trauma is, what, what trauma really is. Um, does time really heal? What awakening is with trauma? And why trauma is important in the evolution of consciousness? Such a great episode and so much to take away. Can't wait for you guys to listen. Great. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. Um, I am so happy to have you on here today on the Evolve Mindset podcast. Um, so thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, wow. I don't even know where to begin. Well, I do know where to begin, but I just have so many questions for you. Um, with your expertise in trauma, um, I fully believe that when it comes to our trauma, we should really be speaking to the experts about it just because there's there's so much going on behind the scenes that we may not be aware of. Um, so I actually have like a an, more of a personal question for yourself. Um, how did you decide to actually work full time in helping people with their trauma? Yeah, so I um, have a lot of history with trauma, of course, or I wouldn't be in this field, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and my own early childhood trauma and abuse led me on a path to really understand the complexities of trauma and mental health. And what I realized was on my own path of healing, not many people really understood how to get into the depths of trauma and transform it on an embodied level. So, you know, psychotherapy, coaching, even a lot of different spiritual healing and stuff like that addresses aspects of trauma, right? But never really got into the fine nuances of how the trauma gets stored in the body and the energy system. And so I, through my own healing process, came up with the method that I teach. Mm, that's beautiful. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, that's kind of how I personally too went down the rabbit hole of trauma. I myself am not certified in, in trauma healing by all means, but I feel like I am an expert in my own trauma. Like I feel like everyone definitely is. Um, and with that, like here you are, because I feel like I've been so pulled to you because I just have like so much interest in it. Um, yeah. And I feel like there may even be a misconception with trauma, like how do you define what trauma is? Yeah, and I love that you're bringing this up because there really is a lot of misconception around trauma. People hear the word and they're like, oh no, not me. Like, you know, nine out of 10 people that come to me are like, oh, I just want, you know, to work on these few things. I don't have trauma mm -hmm. because they believe trauma is like this huge event that you know, was so destructive and like such a big thing. And that is trauma, you know, accidents, natural disasters, that kind of stuff definitely is trauma. And trauma is also little things that impact us in our family of origin, in our relationships, in um, the way that we relate to the world and even the things that we come into the world with that have been passed on transgenerationally, we call that transgenerational trauma, you know, in our cells and our DNA, we already have trauma imprints that come through our ancestors. There's been research like on the children and grandchildren of people that came through the Holocaust. And you could see that the, the DNA and the cellular structure has changed. And so we come into the world imprinted with whatever unhealed trauma our ancestors were carrying. Mm, yeah, I, I've only recently been learning a bit about that. I don't know much about my own ancestral trauma, but um, actually now I feel pulled to share this. Um, on my biological father's side, from my understanding, um, our family was forced to be in the Nazi war. So I feel like there is a lot of ancestral trauma passed on from that. Um, I don't know the depths of it myself, but 
I totally can feel like the shame when it comes to like racism and that kind of stuff. Like I feel like it's deeply embedded in my soul almost. Yeah, yeah. This is how this kind of stuff works. And a lot of times like we don't know the history, right? We don't know our lineage and but we come in with these imprints and they often look like mental health issues, right? When it's mm. trauma. Mhm. Totally. Um oh, that Oh, so I actually do remember reading um, somewhere. I can't, I won't be able to cite it, but I do remember reading that by the age of two, there's a lot of embedded trauma in all of us. And it's it's almost like our parents, um, not that they necessarily mean to do it, but by the time we're the age of two, we have all this trauma and all these different lenses of perspective that's already been kind of like put over our, pull, pulled over our eyes. Um, do, you ha- do you have any... I guess, insight or expertise along with um, youth? So even from the time we're in our mother's womb, we're already taking on whatever she's feeling, right? So there's a lot of research in pre and perinatal psychology and how it impacts the fetus, the emotions that the mom's going through. So if you were wanted, if you weren't wanted, if your parents were, you know, having a healthy relationship, an unhealthy relationship, if your mother felt good, like it all is going to impact and imprint um, how you come into the world. And Oh, so before the age of two, our brains are still really malleable. This is when we are forming our perceptions, right, of the world. And the way that we form perception is by what we are taking in from the external world. And so whatever our surroundings are, when we're children, are contributing to forming the perception that we have. And now perception is something that is like a lens, right? That we put on. So if somebody tells you that, um, you know, boys are stinky or they tell you that life is hard or they tell you that, you know, if you do that, you're a bad person, whatever it is, whatever you're hearing, whatever you're absorbing, whatever information is penetrating you when you're young and your brain is still developing, you're taking these things in as definitives, right? Because that's what we do when we're children, especially from the people around us that are our caregivers. And so this kind of shapes the way that we perceive the world. And I actually believe, I believe, this is my personal belief, these are all traumas because any belief, I believe, that is formed that did not come from the essence of who you are, your own truth, that's a trauma lens, in my opinion. These are the structures that we literally build our world through. And because our world is so subject to change by the beliefs that we lock in, we get trapped, right? And and that's what I believe trauma is. It's like these jails that we're trapped in, these belief systems, these um, situations that had impact on the way that we have our behavior and our actions. And so everybody in my eyes has some form of trauma, some kind of jail that they're still held in that doesn't actually feel aligned with what they really want in the world and the world that they want to live in. And I believe what's happening on a macro level, tell me if I'm going on a tangent because I could do that, (laughs) is a reflection of what the trauma that's happening in each one of us. Like we see what's going on in the world and all the fighting. So when we have situations that bring up the unknown, you could really see the trauma in people. And as we could see the whole world's fighting or disassociating, these are all trauma responses. And so what we're seeing now is a lot of trauma in the collective Mm -hmm. that's coming up, right? As we're in such a a weird time in history, right? Mm -hmm, Totally. I actually, I say this all the time. I feel like uncertainty really shows how resilient um, our nervous system is, which directly is in correlation with what kind of trauma we're holding. A hundred percent. And if we have unhealed trauma, 
it's going to trigger that and we're going to go right back into survival mode, which brings us into fight, flight, freeze. And we see this is happening to everybody pretty much right now because of the underlying unhealed trauma that people are carrying. They don't know how to be present in what's happening and feel safe in the body. And so Mm -hmm. they go into one of these survival mechanisms and it really happens in order to protect yourself, but it's not actually healthy because you become disconnected from yourself when you're in survival mode. Mm -hmm. Totally. I can resonate with that just from my own trauma, just actually being, being, being able to build up my own personal awareness and actually seeing how I'm reacting to people around me and situations in my life. Um, totally (laughs) that makes so much sense um i guess i have another question for you then um when you're committed to your own healing journey um how do you know if you have more trauma to work with there's always the next level right so it like it depends how deep you want to take it like how big you want to grow because we're infinite we're infinite being Mm. and our consciousness is infinite and when we start to dig deeper into those boxes or jails that I was talking about, right, we create more freedom for ourselves. And so it's like, how much freedom do you want to have? And then how much do you want to overflow so that you could start to support other people and invite other people into that freedom? So if you want to, you know, have a huge community and space that you're holding for many people, You want to do the ongoing work because when you're in relationship is when your traumas come up the most. So the more relationships you have, the more people that you hold space for, the deeper you need to dig in yourself. Mm, That's beautiful. Um, I've totally noticed that the more people that I personally just interact with, like for you, for example, um, this is this is a new experience for me, a new new type of new form of communication. Like I have my own traumas, even like right this second, like the fear of, oh, what is she going to think of me? The fear of what are people going to think of how I present myself? Like those are all I realize my own trauma, my own limiting beliefs intertwined with that. Yeah, 100 percent. And then it's like, So getting to the core of those things takes work. And it's not like it happens today, tomorrow, like it consistently takes work because on the other end, you could start, you know, you start healing those layers of shame, of insecurity, of doubt, right? And then you expand into more confidence, more security, but it takes like I'm saying, as much time as you want, depending on how big you want to grow those things that are on the other side of that. And so we could just keep going further into them, right? And then expanding on the other end. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. And that actually makes me think now too, I feel like it's a common um, metaphor or people always say time heals everything. When it comes to trauma, Do you believe that? Yeah, I really do. I believe it takes time and that we can't rush our healing. You know, we are wounded as a collective and Mm. as a society. And so it's not something we want to rush through because the integration part is crucial when it comes to healing. And so you want to, with trauma, go in and then come out and go in and come out so that we don't flood our systems. And this is where a lot of models miss this part of integration. And it's so important that you don't rush through the healing and you really follow your body's ability to integrate the healing that you're going into. And so I don't believe that you know, the work is done until the world is healed. And mm. I think we have a long way to go. <laughs> yes. Just a little, just a little guess. I'm pretty <laughs> sure we're having a little ways to go here. Oh, for sure. Just, yeah, just looking around. Um, 100% agree with that. <laughs> and you, we kind of touched on this a little bit. Um, when it comes to our actual mindset work, our mindset development, um, 
obviously it's incredibly important and it's crucial for all of us to kind of go through those stages of like waking up ascension however we all resonate with that um but what happens to trauma in that process yeah well i mean i believe waking up and an ascension is a process of healing trauma right because like i said it's going back to a cleaner and i believe ascension is going back to a cleaner slate. So it's moving the layers of trauma, the perceptions, the lenses that we've had on. So we could go back into potentiality. And the the, the more we expand our consciousness, the more potentiality we gain, right? And it's that potentiality that's the field that we get to play in to create what we really want to create for ourselves, And so I believe that, that whatever is not that potentiality is trauma. Mm, Definitely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know that trauma is a response to something. Um, What kind of, kind of response can be helpful or even desirable? Instead of looking at trauma as this thing that happened to us and it's like, something limiting to us. Um, Is there ever a time that it actually is favorable? Well, I believe that, you know, there's a stigmatism around trauma and it's like, it's such a normal thing. Like everybody has it on some level. And so if we could just normalize it, like it's not a bad thing. It's just a thing that we all have. You know what I mean? It's like, just like hair, (laughs) whatever. It's like this thing that we're all carrying on some level. We live on planet earth. We all have been penetrated with some kind of beliefs or false like um, ideas that aren't ours. Right. And so once we can admit that we all have trauma on some level, we don't have to make it limiting because the thing is, is that we're meant to evolve as human beings, just like plants are meant to grow. And what's happened because of our conditioning and the conditioning of our society is actually put us in the opposite of growth. So it's Mm. put us in stuckness, right? So we have been, and I could get really woo-woo and out here, but We've been conditioned to stay stuck instead of grow and evolve. So it's just like healing trauma is is getting into the flow of what we're meant to be doing as growing humans, right? We're not supposed to be trapped. We're supposed to be evolving, not just in our physical body, but in our mental and our spiritual body as well. And so it's not like this horrible thing. It's like this opportunity to step into the flow of, of evolution and growth instead of being trapped, right. And Mm -hmm. stuck in a a lower consciousness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, I find that, uh, people that undergo adversity or trauma or however other people would like to call it, they have like that, that witty sense of humor. They have like a sense of resiliency to them and um like sarcasm for example i find like when i was like really in the butt end of my own trauma i was such a sarcastic sassy um bitch (laughs) to to say the least yeah yeah i mean it definitely brings up all the feels you know it brings up all the feelings but that's the thing is it lets you feel instead Mm -hmm. of not feel and so I think it's healthier to feel, even if you don't know how to regulate your feelings yet, than to completely be cut off and repressed from your feelings, because that is like being dead. It's like equivalent to being dead. And there's so many people that are literally walking around disassociated and dead. Like they don't even know they have access to their consciousness and their feelings. And so it is a blessing to start to understand, like, there's something beyond this. There's something beyond this level of consciousness that I've been operating at. And when you start to work on your trauma, you start to access those deeper levels of consciousness. Mm, totally. I, I recently um, did a lot of breath work and I, I actually physically moved through a lot of trauma in my body. 
Um, something I've been practicing on my own and the expansion I felt thereafter. And like, obviously you have like all these flashes of this trauma. So I really was able to associate what was going on and really feel safe in my body thereafter. Um, but it was really interesting the how the how I felt the expansion in my body and just overall clarity after it was really amazing. Yeah, because when we start to move trauma out, like um, on a physical and energetic level, we make more room for expansion, for joy, for these things that we want to feel but aren't able to really embody and tune into because we're so stuck in retraction. And that's what trauma does to us. It, it, it holds us tight, like in those jails that I was talking about. And when we move it, we start to feel the physical expansion, the opportunity, the potentiality, right, that we have to tap into. So that's what happens as you start to move it out. And this is what I'm saying. It's infinite. Like it is literally infinite how much potential you could tap into the worlds that you're able to create for yourself when you start to move that stuff out of your body. Mm, yeah, totally beautiful. Thank you. Um, also, like I love to touch base too. Like I really feel that um, as much as trauma, I feel like is like a part of us and kind of like it's almost required to be a human in this 3D literal world. Um, but I also feel like how resilient our nervous system is, is really going to depict how successful we are in our life, whether that be with our career, our, our sex life, um, uh, even feeling like we have purpose in our life. Um, what do you think of that? Yeah, I think you're a million percent on and what happens when we have trauma is we go out of that window of tolerance. So our nervous system is supposed to regulate us within this window of tolerance at the high end being stressed, right? And at the low end, it's like lethargic. And when we break through the top or the bottom, that's what trauma is. And so you get stuck on or off when you go outside of that window of tolerance. And so you literally can't operate and function when you're stuck outside of that window of tolerance. So when we heal trauma, we have to learn to get back in that window so that we can operate from the present moment, right? Because we're not there if we're outside of the window. Mm, yeah, totally. I really appreciate all your insight. Um, so on the topic of trauma, obviously, <laughs> is there any final points you'd like to leave for our listeners? Um, maybe someone that has been following along in the conversation and just realizing that they have all this trauma, realizing that there's something that they'd like to do about it. Yeah. First of all, you're not alone. You're a human being, right? We all, again, have it on some level. Some people have it you know, more intensely than others. And trauma is, it's not like there's no regulatory thing around it. So one person can see the same thing as another person and they'll have two different reactions to it. So it's based on like your own sensitivity, your own chemical makeup, your family, so many things. And so, you know, Never compare your trauma to somebody else's or be like, oh, I shouldn't be this, you know, upset about this because other people have had worse traumas. So don't compare yourself and your trauma. Allow yourself to honor and validate whatever it is that you're going through, whatever trauma you're having, no matter how big or how small, and just start with what's there because that right there is like, the doorway for you to get to what it is that you really want, which is freedom for most people. Mm, that was beautiful. It touched my heart. <laughs> um, I totally like, yeah, I say that to a lot of people, like like the comparison, right? The comparing, like you're just hurting yourself. Like we're, we're all equal. We're all on the same path, the same journey. We all want the same things at the end of the day. A hundred percent. It's so funny, like in my practice or my classes, how people will even compare trauma. And I'm like, mm. 
fun. <laughs> you know, like, we got to stop doing this. <laughs> yeah, it still feels the same way in the body. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Melissa. I have really enjoyed this chat and I really appreciate you and all your knowledge that you brought with us today on the podcast. Um, at this moment, I'd really like to give you the stage to share any offerings, how people can reach you on social media, email, website, whatever. Awesome. So I'm Melissa Lapidus on Facebook. I am Safe Trauma Healing on Instagram. And my website is www.safetraumahealing.com. And I am twice a year, I launch a course for healing trauma and then becoming a practitioner of my safe space method to work with others to heal their trauma as well. Beautiful. Thank you again so much, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me.